What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Brian Costa. And today, you guys, I have a fantastic episode in store for you guys. First of all, I am so glad to be back. I took a week off for Thanksgiving break and definitely was needed. Uh, you know, it was great to get home, refresh, see the family, all that good stuff. And I'm really glad to be back on Bryant University's campus. However, you know, home stretch right now, trying to get through finals, basically, you know, the last home stretch before, you know, winter break comes up and all that good stuff. Uh, but first of all, I am so glad to be back on doing a show today, though. And and with that, unfortunately, Tyler Stringfellow, my co-host, is out today. So I do have an amazing guest host slash guest appearance in today. He's a He has appeared on this show before. However, it's been far too long since I last got him on an episode. I think we last recorded back in June. So without any further ado, he is he is the man who has amassed now over 140,000 followers on TikTok. He, you can find him on his Instagram at Elijah Boven Music. So without any further ado, please welcome back to DTW, Elijah Boven. Elijah, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. How about you? Man, I am doing fantastic. Again, talking to you beforehand about some of my earlier troubles yeah. <laughs> and some of the things that kind of came into uh, this episode getting delayed for obviously uh, anyone listening to this, they kind of wouldn't know anything about the way this episode got off the ground. Obviously, uh, after our episode in June, I, you know, try to always keep try to keep a good connection with people I've done shows with. And when it came to when it came to you, I really wanted to get you back on the air because I really liked what we had the last time we did a show with each other. And I think I messaged you a couple days after Halloween. And as I mentioned to you, I had the, the day we had a show, I think I had a meeting that came up in literally the very next day. I came down with the freaking plague, man. I, <laughs> I fell off the face of the earth. It was terrible. <laughs> and I, for like a week, I just like could not even like look up. I don't even know how I got through school that week. And the fact that I'm, I, I'm so glad that I'm okay, that I'm okay now. Uh, but uh, you know, everything kind of just got delayed and then Thanksgiving happened. And man, mm. I, I just got to say, November's a terrible month to plan. Things. <laughs> <laughs> it really yeah. sucks. I just feel like, yeah. Plus it's about to get cold. So like everyone's like trying to like figure out, oh, okay, well, we're going to do this before it gets cold and then we can't oh, go yeah. outside. And just like, yeah, dude, I feel you. I feel you. Oh man, it is. It can sometimes be a real pain, but man, I'm so glad to have you back on the program today. But I appreciate it. I appreciate being back. And uh, I had fun last time. I'm looking forward to today. Yeah. So. So obviously, man, um, I, I, as, as you can see, as I know through your content, you love to talk a bunch of Boston sports. We'll get into that in the course of the show. But first of all, I think the big story, which I had to cover across the sports world, is MLB free agency having an absolute friendly right now. It is going absolutely berserk in, the, in Major League Baseball right now. I don't know if you've seen it, but some of the oh, yeah. top, top free agents are signing left and right. And uh, for a lot of people, this is something that really doesn't happen until – you know, much later into the off season around maybe mid January to February, some of these guys mm -hmm. will sign, but they're all signing right now because there is a potential league wide shutdown coming because their collective bargaining agreement is up. And man, that has led to some guys like Marcus Simeon signing with the Texas Rangers on a seven year, $175 million deal. Uh, Kevin Gosman's going to the Toronto blue Jays, a AL Cy Young, a AL Cy Young winner, Robbie Ray is going to the Mariners. Max Scherzer of all guys is going to the New York yeah. Nets. Did, did you see that contract that he's getting? I, I love it. I, it's just weird. He didn't feel like he, he was going to go to the, I don't know. Like you yeah. look at him and you're just like, he, I don't know. You know, when you like see someone, you're just like, they should be on this team. Like yeah. I bet like that's the, their team. The Mets just threw me though. Yeah. The Mets I, threw me, but that contract is crazy. Dude. I, I saw a tweet by Jeff Passon of ESPN. He came out and he ended up saying that I believe Max Scherzer is making, is going to be, you know, making more annually than, than the Baltimore Orioles and the Pittsburgh pirates on their entire payroll. <laughs> He's oh, making God. like $43 million a, a year. The pit, the pirates are making like 40. And I think the Orioles are sitting at like 19 million, which I'm like, how the hell is that even possible? It's beyond me how you can get to that point where you're just like, yeah, no, dude, I'm worth like this much a year. <laughs> I'm like, worth that's more crazy. Than, yeah. That's crazy. Man has an annual revenue of more than a franchise right now. It's ridiculous. That's, I mean, good for him. Yeah. Like he, he's definitely, I don't know if anybody deserves that much money, but like he's definitely paid, like he's earned whatever he oh, gets yeah. as far as that goes. Like dude's insane. I mean, yeah. he's been, you know, what top of the game for how long now? Like, I mean, yeah, at least the last 12, maybe 15 years or so. He's oh, just God, been, yeah. he's just been that guy. Yeah. And when, when it comes to Max Scherzer, he is, 
And the crazy thing about this contract too, is he's getting this contract at the age of 37. Yeah. Which is crazy. <laughs> I mean, most guys, most guys in the MLB at 37 are sitting on the couch, like a couple years into their retirement, which is crazy. And Max Scherzer is performing, you know, arguably, arguably as good as he's ever been. Yeah. That's the crazy uh, thing about him. It's very Tom Brady esque. I got to be honest with you. It's yeah. uh, it's a little infuriating, but <laughs> It's a little Tom Brady esque, <laughs> little Nolan Ryan esque, kind of a little bit because it's crazy. He pitched until like he was what, like 46 years old? I think so, so, something like that. Yeah. So, you know, you're seeing Max Scherzer just do these unreal things. And frankly, man, it's incredible. I think this, this has to be like one, this, this has to be the most he'll be making annually throughout his entire life. And oh, yeah. It's, it's absurd. I mean, listen. All the credit to Steve Cohen. He is just <laughs> pumping money into that thing. He went out and got some other guys as well. Mm -hmm. But my God, man, that was an insane contract. Uh, uh, yeah. And and then to top it all off, one of the contracts I didn't see coming to was uh, now former Dodger shortstop. Uh, Corey Seager got $325 million from the yes. Texas Rangers on a 10-year deal. Dude, the Rangers are going all in. Yeah. And it, it's honestly like... It's about time. They, they've they been pretty like mid-level, like, you know, it, it, it's yeah. good for baseball. Like there's definitely just like a dynamic shift now and like, it should be good. It should be interesting. I'm excited to see like what comes of that. That infield is going to be nuts though. Yeah, man. I recorded a TikTok earlier today and I ended up saying, uh, I ended up saying, oh, the Texas Rangers are, are, you know, going all in. The Detroit Tigers are going all in. This feels like 2011 all over it again. It, it does like it's every 10 years. And you know, the tigers are just back at it because they ended up going in today and they, they ended up signing Javi Baez mm -hmm. when, I mean, they signed him to, I think it was a six year, $140 million contract. Yeah. There were some original ties for them would get uh Carlos Correa because uh, his former manager, AJ Hinge is currently the manager of the tigers. And you know, they actually were spotted at a restaurant together. Like oh, really? over the off season. Yeah. There were like some leaked photos. Uh, Correa had actually, you know, for like a split second on Twitter, he put a little tiger emoji in his bio, but then took it away right away. <laughs> so there's been some crazy back and forth going on there. And I, something must have fallen through for them to yeah. say, no, 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 we're just going to get bias instead. Dude, I love the little, like the Twitter thing. The Twitter is always the first thing that's like, oh, wait, no, I messed up. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> like, I mean, what you got Miles Turner, like a couple of years ago, unfollowing everybody and then like posting a clover and you're just like, Oh no. All right. You come to the Celtics and then just like, absolutely not. And it just all falls apart. Yeah. I, I, those little like things always get me so much. Like you see a guy like, well, like hint something on social media and like, and it's just like, Oh my God, what's happening. They're unfollowing all their teammates and yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Anthony Davis just followed, just followed a uh, Kemba Walker when he was on mm -hmm. the Celtics. Oh my God, something's happening. But then it always falls flat. And, and oh, it's, it's some of the most infuriating things ever. Cause it can sometimes be so petty too. Oh God. Yeah. Oh my no, God. And it's, that's the thing. It's just such a tease, dude. Like oh it, it gets me, I'm so excited to see when that happens. And then just like hopes instantly just decline. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right, well, hopefully we're not too bad still, but like, you know, if, if someone's waving something in front of you like that, it's like, all right, it, just please sign the contract so we can at least have a dynasty or something. I, I just want a dynasty again. I need I mean it. I mean, you mentioned the Celtics and I'll get back to baseball in a second, but you mentioned the Celtics, especially when it's a prime like center that we haven't mm -hmm. had since like possibly Kendrick Perkins. Like, oh God, it, yeah. It's such a tease, man. You're, you're right. Nah, dude, it's, uh, it's rough, rough yeah. center position. I like Robert Williams though. So oh, I'm good. I'm good with that. I, I love me some time. Yeah. Lord. I'll give you that. I'll, I love myself some time Lord. Oh, but not nah, man. The, the, all these, all these contracts around baseball so far have been absolutely crazy. And as I mentioned, it's because there's a potential lockout coming uh, within the next, you know, what, what, eight hours or so the, the MLB like is going to possibly just shut down and there's going to be nothing happening. Teams won't be allowed to sign players, managers, no mm -hmm. trades will be able to happen. So the MLB is about to kind of just go into a state of, you know, just eat, you know, I don't know how to say it. Just like, I, I know what you mean. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like it, nothing's it, coming in, nothing's it's coming just, out. It's just going to be like, what the hell are we yeah. doing? It's just going to be just a state of limbo. That's what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to know what, what the hell you're doing. And yeah. it, it, it begs a lot of questions as to what's going to come in the MLB next. A lot of people are saying that in the collective bargaining, bargaining agreement, 
Uh, they want better. They want better pay for some mid-level players. Obviously, mm-hmm. guys like Scherzer aren't complaining for better no, pay. He just no, got, he's, he's he fine. Just, he just got the bag, so he's not complaining whatsoever. But uh, I guess a lot of the complaints is that a bunch of mid-level guys usually want more money, and that's where a lot of the complaints come in, which is kind of yeah. valid because you see minor leaguers get paid so freaking little. Oh god, yeah. Especially compared to these guys, they get a fraction of that. Yeah. And it's barely even a living wage. I know that Mm -hmm. the MLB has tried to remedy that and it's kind of been back and forth. But one of the one of the other big things that they're talking about too is adding a universal DH with it, which they tried in 2020. Mm -hmm. And another big thing that they could possibly be talking about is moving the mound back. That's gonna throw so many people off, no pun intended. But like that's yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard about this, but I haven't. I haven't. They're considering doing it because they want to pump more offense into the game. I mean, it needs definitely to be something. I don't know if that's it, but like there definitely does need to be more excitement because some some games just drag. Like some are like extremely just captivating, like can't get up and go to the bathroom, anything. But mm-hmm. then, like some of them are just like, wow, this is four hours of just a a, a watching one, paint dry, and yeah, like one 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 pitchers duel, and you know, I, yeah. as as a diehard baseball fan, I can kind of enjoy that mm-hmm. if I'm there and I'm witnessing it. I can yeah, enjoy yeah. It. But if I'm just like flipping through like the channels and I come across one, I'm just like, what the heck is going on? I know, yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it, it you either get one or the other, and it's like so mm-hmm. tough. It's good though. I mean, oh, yeah. like it definitely does need to redo something. Mm-hmm. Cause something does need to change and it's, yeah. I feel like they're taking steps in the right direction. At least like the past, like couple of years have kind of like slowly, slowly started to gain at least my interest again. Mm-hmm. Um, I went through like a dry spell of not watching baseball for a long time since I like stopped playing it. And it was just like, you know, there's other stuff, there's other stuff on TV. Yeah. But then like, yeah. So like the past couple of years, it's kind of been like slowly creeping up and like getting a little bit better as far as like, trying to engage more fans and everything, which is good. It needs it, but I don't know if uh, moving the mound back is going to be it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really don't. I really don't know either. It's it, there's a lot of possible things that you could do. I don't really like altering like the traditional way that people have been playing the game for so yeah. many years. It just doesn't feel right to me. I, I feel like there, like, there has to be other ways that you can just do stuff like that, but, mm-hmm. and, and that just wouldn't be the way I would personally do it. I'm, personally against a universal dh because i kind of like seeing like the different leagues just like and some yeah. guys like that never bad a year like every year have to go up there and, and they're oh, like it's so confused it's it's honestly kind of like a little mini game just to see them so confused mm-hmm. it's so funny but uh you know you mentioned about kind of getting back into baseball over the past couple of years uh you know and w- with that being said the boston red sox kind of were a team that you know got a lot of people uh back in and interested yeah. in, in the team this year uh i know when we had talked about them at first it, we were unsure kind of as to how their season yeah. would go and frankly it was it kind of ended up being uh, somewhat of a success for what we originally thought it was going to be cuz mm-hmm. man 2020 they were god awful yeah i anything was better than that i yeah. <laughs> And I mean, you know, they came out and it, it was like, okay, they're a little competitive team at first, but when are they going to fall apart? And mm-hmm. that was kind of the thing that a lot of us thought. And they ended up making to the AL to the ALCS, and it was a very fun team to watch. I mean, you know, while while I still think a 2018 is a fun team, the 2020 yeah. run Red Sox were a fun group of guys to watch. And unfortunately, their offense fell flat at the end. But they're going to be one of those teams that if they can go, you know, win a World Series in you know maybe 2022 or 2023. The 2021 Red Sox will kind of be remembered as one of those teams that, you know, set the stage for guys to come. I know, yeah. you know, for I think I think I was about the same age uh, when when the Red Sox won in 04. I think I was the same age you were when they won it in 2013, if that makes sense. So so I, when whenever they won in 04, you were how old? Oh, yeah, um, I was in sixth grade. OK, so I think I yeah. so, so I was around the same age when they won it in 2013. Okay. Okay. I got yeah, you. So that, that's what I meant to say. So when that ended up happening and they did it, you know, I'll, I'll, you kind of remember stuff from those earlier, you know, when they won it in 04, mm-hmm. you kind of have a better memory of it than I do. Uh, what this kind of 2021 Red Sox team reminded me of, and I'll get back into free agency and all that stuff in just a second. They remind me of the 2003 Red Sox a little bit where yeah. they set the stage and they ended up, you know, leading into 2004 where there was a huge jump mm-hmm. and it led everything into this season. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely like, I, cause I remember like in 2004, they just had so much like charisma Yeah, and 
you know, it's starting to like, I definitely see what you mean. Like it's starting to like build back to that. So it's like definitely trying at least like, you know, they got some good, like they want, they had a run this year, which I didn't expect. I don't know how many other people, like I knew they were going to be like mid-level. I didn't think they'd get like, you know, as close as they did to that. They kind of, again, like you said, crumbled, but I mean, for sure, like that, just seeing that they can take like a team like that to that level is like, makes it at least more enticing for more people to like come here and then like add to the clubhouse, yeah. which I'm excited about because that's again, like it was a fun team to watch. This yeah. was an extremely fun team to watch. Mm-hmm. Like I love Kike Hernandez. That's, Oh my God. The man's an electric that's the guy right there. I love him. I love myself some Kike as well. And while this team isn't exactly like the cowboy up Red Sox of the early 2000s, where it was like a bunch of guys and, you know, just like kind of cowboys literally in the locker room kind of doing their thing. There's a lot more flair to this team there. You know, you saw guys in the shopping cart doing their thing. And Mm -hmm. it was a very fun team to kind of watch in that aspect. So I'm very interested. I'm very interested, interested to see what they'll do in this offseason. I know Heim Bloom and Mm -hmm. their and their front office is kind of very money ball centric and they don't like to spend a lot of money traditionally. So I'll be interested to see what the what they do, especially with uh, all the craziness going in this potential MLB shutdown. Uh, Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mentioned the I mentioned this team reminded me of the 2003 Red Sox. The thing that separated the 2003 Red Sox from the 2004 Red Sox is they went out and they ended up getting a Kurt Schilling. They they said they said, all right, we we need to go all in for this next season. We're going to go out. We're going to get a Kurt Schilling. We're going to make moves. And some of those moves were difficult. They ended up trading. They ended up trading Nomar away to. No, no more way to the Cubs, which was a very difficult move to make. We ended up making some very difficult moves as a franchise. And as a result, it led us to a championship. I don't know what those moves will be for the Red Sox this year. I don't, I don't think you touch bogey in this instance, but uh, I, I'm interested. I, I want to see if we go out and get a pitcher, if we go out and maybe get a Marcus Stroman in free agency, if we bring back Kyle Schwarber, those are some guys that I'd really love to see the Red Sox go after and get. Yeah. I like Kyle Schwarber. Like, yeah. I didn't expect him to fit in as well as he did here. Um, but yeah, no, like I do his clutch too. Yeah. Like you can't knock it. So I, hopefully they keep him around. I mean, um, man, do you remember, do you remember those absolute shots he was hitting in the playoffs? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Duke can hit some just bullets. So I was about to swear right there. Um, oh, you're, you're fine. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I really hope they bring Kyle Schwarber back. Yeah. But yeah, we, we need pitching because. I feel like every year that's typically like where it kind of fall, at least the past like few years, that's where it's like fallen. Even during, even during 2018, our bullpen, Mm -hmm. our bullpen went on a rally at the end and just became like this, like absolute, like, like wagon, but like, Mm -hmm. we weren't that through the regular season. We like, that is not like Joe Kelly was not like the stud that he was in the postseason throughout 2018 Mm -hmm. regular season. So we've kind of had pitching problems for the last couple of years now, and nothing's ever been set in stone, but I agree with you. We do need to go out and get some pitchers. The Red Sox already did make a move and they got Michael Waka from the Tampa Bay Rays. Mm -hmm. They got him on a $3 million contract that that's kind of a hit or miss. I mean, maybe at the end of the day, maybe you can stick him in the bullpen, but frankly, he could either be a really high, you know, really, you know, good, really good piece for us. And he becomes, Mm -hmm. you know, one of these, you know, you know, kind of like under the radar pickups. And, you know, at the end of the day, we only got him for 3 million bucks Yeah. or he ends up becoming Garrett Richards 2.0 and it just kind of falls apart. So, on that. <laughs> yeah. It's a possibility. Unfortunately, yeah. well, it, it, it is, but you know, this is, this is similar to what Heim does. He, he got a guy from Tampa. He went in and he made these moves. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited to see how it plays out. I, again, was, I, I haven't followed Waka that much. I know. Yeah. Again, I, like, yeah, I, I, like you said, he was hit or miss, but like, you know, some people just like have breakout years and hopefully that's what's coming. But I would love to see it too. I mean, I remember, I remember seeing Waka in 2013, he actually pitched game two of the world series against mm-hmm. us. And he was like, and when he did, he was like a top notch, like prospect for the Cardinals. Yeah. So if, if we can tap into any of that, any of that former potential and get the mm-hmm. best out of him, I'd love to see it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully here's hoping, man. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, staying on the Red Sox, something else that uh, I wanted to talk with you about quick. And I was taught I wanted to t- I, you know, mentioned the 2021 team, but uh, bringing it back now to obviously a legend of Red Sox nation, uh, David Ortiz, obviously big poppy, the man himself, uh, you know, one of the iconic faces of Boston sports, oh, yeah. of Boston sports lore. Uh, he, this is actually his first year on the ballot for the Hall of Fame. And a lot of people are wondering what, what his status is going to be. I, my opinion of Dave Ortiz is 
first ballot Hall of Famer, completely changed the game for his mm-hmm. position of DH. Like, you know, in my opinion, there really hasn't been a traditional designated hitter since David Ortiz. He no, made no. the position of designated hitter and, you know, was just an icon of this city. Uh, but a lot of people are kind a lot of people don't exactly know what what his situation is going to be. I I think that he should be OK. But uh, back in 2003, there was a, there was a leaked survey that came out from 2003 where David Ortiz admitted to using a using using a substance that wasn't banned at the time. But MLB eventually went on to ban later mm-hmm. on is the way I've understood it. These documents were originally leaked during the biogenesis scandal back, I believe, in 2013. And yeah. it was originally something that was never supposed to get out. It was supposed to be an anonymous survey of, of them just saying, hey, we want to just see whether we need to regulate this stuff or not. And they just went around asking certain players and you know, Ortiz was one of those guys. He never tested positive for any other substance throughout drug tests throughout his career, at least to what we know, because there was never really any stories about it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is really the only kind of blemish that people have ever tried to throw at Ortiz. Uh, is there anything in your mind that would that, that would say that that would say that this could possibly keep Ortiz out of, the, out of the Hall of Fame? Or do you think that he's in good enough graces to get into Cooperstown? I mean, I can't see that being like that big of an yeah. issue. Like, obviously, like if it wasn't, it'd be one thing if he was just like pumping himself full of steroids and, you He's know, caught it was all big. Exactly. But like, I can't see it playing that big of a role, especially like if it wasn't banned at the time, yeah. like you're kind of grandfathered in, like you hit it ahead of the curve and you should be all right. But like, I don't and, know. It, and I, he's definitely, yeah. Again, revolutionized DH, like most clutch player, at least in Boston history. But like, if not like that, just in general, like yeah. every time he comes up, you had to watch it. You couldn't not look. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I don't think it should affect him either. I think that he's going to get in now. I think it's a little bit different than an A-Rod situation where yeah, A-Rod went out and <laughs> A-Rod, A-Rod versus Ortiz. Listen, I, I don't mind A-Rod in, in like on the broadcast booth. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't necessarily like, like him on Sunday Night Baseball, but when they, when he's just like at the commentator's table and he's having fun with Ortiz, I don't mind him there. But yeah. when it came to A-Rod, there was so much lying, so much just other cheating outside of this that went into it. He would he had like these like insane like scientists and doctors with mm-hmm. him trying to figure out the right concoction. He was caught on multiple attempts. So I think this is more than an A-Rod situation. I think that he's in... I think it's going to be a really yeah. tough case to make for A-Rod to get in the Hall yeah. of Fame, frankly. And listen, that could be my bias coming into play here. But I, when, when it comes to Ortiz, it, this is really the only thing people have ever been able to throw at him. And yeah. I, I think that he has to get in. There is nothing that in my mind would would say anything about it. But uh, even if even if they did want to say, oh, there's this possible test, they've let in other guys before who were who had allegations against them. One guy I'm thinking oh, about God, yeah. in particular, Jeff Bagwell. He was obviously absolute slugger with the Astros when he played with them. Mm-hmm. And he was, he was kind of tied into that steroid era and, you know, wasn't, people weren't sure about him. Mike Piazza, who my dad yeah. loves was a, was a, um, because he grew up a Mets fan. He grew up in long Island. So mm-hmm. he was a big fan of Mike Piazza. And, you know, there were some, there were some allegations tied to him. I don't know how legitimate they actually were, but he even yeah. had some stuff tied with him and, you know, he, he ended up getting in. So I think that some of, some of the guys that, you know, there are, there are allegations, but nothing was ever proven. I think that mm-hmm. they're usually safe. The failed tests is usually where you get into trouble. That's yeah. I mean, again, like, first of all, I'm against cheating. Like yeah. you don't do it. Don't do it in relationships. Don't do it in board games. Don't do it sports. But like, again, you still have to hit we the ball. A, we, you guys, guys we, have, we have a hot take right as we have a hot take right here. Elijah is against cheating. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but like we said, it was it was said on November 30th at 4:29 p.m. Uh, yep. Elijah is against cheating. I uh, just want to reiterate that. <laughs> I mean, look. At the end of the day, take me for instance. Like, say I took a bunch of steroids, right? I still couldn't hit a baseball to save my life. At least now, like, I, you still have to hit like a 90 mile an hour fastball. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I yeah, understand. You still, you like, still have to hit it. Yeah. So, like, I understand, like, yeah, it makes you bigger. It, you know, definitely enhances your performance, distance, whatever. But, like, you still got to hit it. You still got to do the work. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't see, like, again, and depending on what he actually took. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you look at football and everything. People take steroids all the time. Yeah. You get a four-game suspension. That's it. No one talks about it again until, you know, time is coming like this and 
I just, I don't know, for baseball, I, how many people have done that throughout baseball that are like, okay, like if this is actually what blemishes Ortiz's career, it's just yeah, then you, 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 have to throw, you have to throw anyone who even has an, a possible allegation. Oh, yeah. And it could be made by anyone. If like mm-hmm. At that point, a, a, everyone has to be tossed out. And it comes to – there's a lot of people where it's still very back and forth. Obviously, Barry Bonds is the is yeah. always going to be a controversial name. This is actually his last year on the ballot. I didn't know if you knew this. But this, this is the last year he's eligible for, before, you know, like some senior committee 20 years down the line could possibly elect him. But on the traditional ballot, this is Barry Bonds' last year on the Hall of Fame ballot, which – is pretty crazy. So I, I don't know about you, but how do you feel about Barry Bonds? And, you know, do you think that on his last year on the ballot, do you think he'll get enough votes to get in? I think on a technicality, he should be in there. You know what I mean? Like he did hit all those home runs. He was dynamic for a long period of time. I think there should be an asterisk just because there are a lot of allegations. Like the dude gained how much weight and yeah, he, he that went short from, amount of time. He went from like this little stocky, you know, speedy kind of, mm-hmm. you know, outfielder to a moose. <laughs> like he, like pretty I mean, much. Have you ever like you've seen Barry Bonds's forehead, right? Yeah, like that thing yeah. grew like that thing grew like five sizes in the like over like a span of like two years. Mm-hmm. Mark McGuire so, too. I mean, you oh, look yeah. at Mark McGuire like early in his career, same thing. So mm-hmm. like again, I think if you are that dynamic and you have been doing it over that long of a period of time and you still got like you know all the records or whatever you should be in there yeah but like put an asterisk and be like but you know there's also a bunch of stuff that he probably did and enhance this so the the thing for barry which is interesting for me so i mean if if it comes back that you're positive and you know it was banned at the time you knew it was banned and you like you, you know, it wasn't like snuck into your food or something. I think that yeah. I, I think that should keep you out of the Hall of Fame. Like a guy like Roger Clemens, you know, I love, you know, obviously a legend in Boston and in yeah. New York, obviously had both of those situations. You know, he went before Congress and he had a legit situation there. And he, mm-hmm. you know, he probably won't get in because of his because of his uh, allegations. Yeah. And then but with Barry, from what I believe, you know, to, to this day, obviously, you can't ignore the um, the immense growth that he went through, but I don't think that he ever actually tested positive for a legitimate substance, yeah. which is crazy because he was on something, but they just never, they just caught him like right in the cycle where it mm-hmm. just wasn't in his body. And like, look, more power to you if you can do that. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, still it's, um, I don't know. I mean, again, Andy Pettit, like, Oh yeah. Admit it. He was like, yeah, you know what? I'm sorry. I took steroids mm. and like, okay, you respect that. Like, yes, he cheated. He admitted it. He owned up to it. That's fine. Like, it's still not right. But like, if, if you did something, if you admit to it, I, I have more, for, I have more forgiveness to you, whether it, that, that may not even, that may not end up changing my mm. overall opinion of what, yeah. what you might do in the hall of fame, but I can at least be forgiving of that. When, when you end up going out there and like, you kind of like try to stand your ground and you don't really, mm. You know, that, that, that's when that's when I think you'll lose a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's like, I don't know. I, again, watching Barry Bonds was probably one of the most, you know, intriguing moments of at least my, you know, watching sports, yeah. like in my entire life. I remember when he hit it. I remember exactly where I was. You ended up telling me about, about this on the last show. You ended up telling me where you were when he last hit it. I, I If you want to yeah. go over that again, you can kind of briefly sum, summarize I mean, that. So basically like... Well, Barry Bonds, I was actually at Hampton Beach. I was on a family vacation. Yeah. And I remember someone like yelling, like, Barry Bonds is up because I went with like, we ran into our other family, like friends. Oh Cause like God. every year we'd go to Hampton Beach yeah. and stay at the same exact hotel. <laughs> and I remember like being at the pool, it was like, you know, a little later at night because they were playing in San Francisco at the time. Yeah. So like the time difference. And I just remember hearing like, Barry Bonds is up. Everyone got out of the pool. Everyone like went to this like TV screen and just watched him hit it. And we were just like, that's ridiculous. Like, I, I, I will never forget like that few like chases right there. Like the last like few home runs of his, like, I'll never forget that. And then that's, you know, something that will stick with me. I enjoyed watching baseball then. Mm. And for that, like, yeah, I respect the hell out of him. Like he definitely like that. That was that era. That was his era right there. It was like yeah. Barry Bonds. You had Mark McGuire a little earlier. You had Sammy Sosa. Like, you, you can't, I don't know. It, it was just, 
you can't beat so it. Many. Yeah, it was just too many, like, just people that were just absolutely stacked. No, I mean, listen, regardless of whether people want to call the era tainted or whatnot, it's the mm. most fun baseball has probably ever been, at least, you know, in most for most of our lives. Yeah. It was the yeah. most entertaining that baseball has ever been. Now, when when he hit it, were, were, the, were the steroid allegations as prevalent as they were now, or was it kind of, were, were people just kind of, like, more caught up in the moment of it? I mean, again, like, you look at how big his head got. Yeah, I mean, if you had to, <laughs> yeah. But if you had to remember back, was it was was everyone kind of just saying, "Oh, it's the steroids," or what? Were, were, was that not really on you know many people's minds? I I know it was a long time ago, but if you had to remember back, yeah. um, I remember my grandfather saying it was probably steroids. Mm. Uh, my grandfather, absolutely diehard baseball fan. He was signed by the Yankees when he was 17 years old, and wow. then ended up not getting to be able to play because he was still eligible for a Legion ball. And then he went to war. He got drafted. So wow. he didn't actually get to play, which sucks. But he played like minor league and stuff. It's incredible. Um, he, I remember like him sitting me down because of like what was going on in baseball. And he was like, it's so different now. <laughs> and like, there's so many different things that people can do to like get an advantage. And I remember like, at least he was very jaded about like steroids. Just absolutely not. Don't do it. And obviously, like, I'm not going to do it, but like, no, I mean, uh, you're not, you're not, you're not like juicing up at eight years old. Oh God, no. But I mean, so at least him, I remember his opinion was very strong on like, it was the steroids that was making him hit all those home runs. And then like, but I mean, for that, that that's as most like I can remember. Yeah. I mean, I remember I, I, my dad not caring. So like, <laughs> it was like, yeah, dude, he just hit all these home runs. <laughs> it's so. sick, right? No, I, so, I mean, for, for me personally, I, I kind of remember growing up and, you know, Barry Bonds for me always has been tied with that. And it's always, it's always been like, oh, Barry Bonds and steroids, Barry Bonds yeah. and steroids. Yeah. So, you know, kind of seeing that, that kind of different kind of perspective of it is interesting. Uh, but that, I think that concludes what we have in MLB news, however. Uh, mm -hmm. But before we do a transition over, over to the NFL, man, I just want to ask you in general, how was your Thanksgiving, man? It was good. It was yeah. good. Um, honestly, didn't do too much, which is kind of yeah. how I like it. Mm -hmm. I don't like going a lot of places. I'm very introverted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like, it was nice to just like spend it with my family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I saw like my aunts and uncles who I haven't seen in like a couple of years, which was nice. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, can't complain. I enjoyed it. Got to eat a lot. Yeah. It's always fun. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know on my end, we kind of had a smaller gathering than we usually mm -hmm. did. One of my aunts was just feeling under the weather. Shit, so she ended up staying yeah. at home. She's fine now. But, uh, you know, we just kind of had we kind of just like kind of laid low, uh, you know, ended up watching some Thanksgiving football. It was always always a good time. Uh, you know, I I let me just say this. I love a lot of the traditions that come with Thanksgiving. I, yeah. I love, you know, always, you know, as someone going off to college and now, you know, appreciate, you know, I, I go home fairly often, but even just going home and appreciating, oh, everyone's coming back from school and, and all that Thanksgiving's kind of, it's kind of given me a new perspective on the holiday. And I really like it a lot more than I used to growing up. It's, you know, really become more of a favorite of mine now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, you know, it, you know, when you're a kid, it, it it's, you know, it used to just be like, oh, this is the holiday. This is the middle holiday between Halloween and Christmas. Mm -hmm. And you kind of exactly just, you're kind of just like there. But man, I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I kind of have a new appreciation for Thanksgiving now. And I, I love it. And I love I love all the tri I, I love all the traditions that come with that. I love, you know, I love always like the big turkey dinner that everyone has. I love, uh, you know, I, know, I love playing football in the yard, going to see mm -hmm. some high school football games. I love, you know. Uh, at least in Massachusetts, they always have like a high school football countdown where yep. they uh, go through all the, like the local schools. And it's always fun to see that, uh, you know, my sister's school was on it the other day and we ended oh, up, really? yeah, we ended up getting to, you know, they ended up playing over at Fenway for a football. Oh, no way. Yeah, it was sick. So I got to see some of their highlights on the TV. I know some of the guys on the team. So that was really awesome to see. And, you know, I love a lot of, the, a lot of the tr traditions that come with Thanksgiving football, but mm -hmm. man, let me just tell you right now, one of the traditions that I cannot stand and listen, man, again, love traditions here. I love traditional <laughs> things. Love, lo love me. Like all these things I've, I've predicated this to you enough. I love this, but man, over time, this tradition has just soured in my mouth and it's the, it's, and man, it is the tradition of the Detroit lions playing on Thanksgiving. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't do it anymore, man. I, I, can't. I knew, I knew it was coming. It, I knew it was coming. It's so painful to watch now. And man, I, 
I, I love the history behind behind it. I, mm-hmm. you know, because for anyone who doesn't know, it all started in 1934 when uh, I believe then Lions owner, I believe his last name was Richards. He ended up going out and wanting to, you know, essentially get more people to be interested in watching the games. And, you know, them and the Cowboys ended up playing on Thanksgiving. And it's been a tradition ever since. And because they started the tradition, the NFL always grants them to always grants them a home game on the holiday. So both the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys play. And listen, man, the Cowboys, the Cowboys for a couple of years weren't too hot either. They they had some eight and eight seasons, with Tony Romo, and it wasn't always the most fun football to watch. But man, the Lions have just my entire life, man. They've always been garbage. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish I could say it wasn't the same, but like they've, I don't know who they have. They had Stafford. Yeah. You know, Megatron. That yeah. was really his only weapon for how long Mm -hmm. and like yeah dude i have never wanted the detroit lions to win as much (laughs) as i did this year i feel so bad that they're like just what is it oh nine and one they're oh ten and one now oh ten and one yeah Yeah, so they they got their double digit loss (laughs) i just i i hope they win i with every fiber of my being i hope to god that they win at least one game this year they can't do another, they can't do another season where where they they can't do another 2008 oh, they can't no that's the thing like it used to be like cleveland right cleveland was just awful god awful they're like mid level now i'm glad yeah happy like cleveland yeah cleveland's finally climbed out of it you mm-hmm. know i'm you know you know wh- whether people want to say baker is a great quarterback or not he's something He's yeah. there. And, and yeah. you know, I, I think, I think a lot, that's the way a lot of Cleveland fans treat him. It, it's like, mm-hmm. like, listen, he's not Tom Brady. He's not Pat Mahomes, but he's something. And we appreciate that. Exactly. And like, that's dude, I can't imagine, first of all, being Jared Goff oh and God. going from the Rams to Detroit. You and have just, the glitz and glamor uh, of Los Angeles. And then you're just, sh- you're just like, just shipped off to the motor city. I oh, hit I just feel so bad for the Detroit Lions and their fan base right now because of how hard it is to watch. Like, but the thing is, that was a good game. Yeah. Like, it was just two bad teams that made each other look like, wow, they're actually not that bad. But, like, in reality, they're both just really bad. They're just terrible. <laughs> or and even evenly just... matched. And you're just like, wow, okay, well. <laughs> yeah, and Chicago is entertaining. Chicago ended up starting Andy Dalton, who's their backup right now, yeah. too, in this game, which just made it even worse. I saw someone, uh, I think – I don't think it was you, but I saw someone on TikTok. They ended up coming out and they were just like looking at the game and they, they ended up saying, man, the NFL really wants us to talk to our families this year. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, damn. I mean, it, it, the only thing that could have made it worse if the Lions ended up starting out their backup, Tim Boyle. Mm-hmm. Like that's the only thing that could have made it worse because man, yeah. I, feel, I feel terrible for Lions fans. And I, I mean, I, I, I know one of, I know one myself here, here at Bryant university campus, which is, which sounds so odd, especially because he's from New Jersey of all places, but he's a Lions yeah. fan. And I'm, I'm just like, man, I'm like, man, they can't play on Thanksgiving anymore. And he goes, Brian, it's all we have. <laughs> it's all, and he sounded, he, he was like, Brian, it's all we have. And we're, we're in a public speaking class together. And, and, the teacher ended up saying, "Come up and say two to three sentences about sentences about what you're about what you're passionate about." And I ended up saying, "And I'm saying we need to end the tradition of the Lions playing on Thanksgiving." And this kid gets up. He 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 come. He didn't even know we were doing the assignment that day. He he comes up and, and says, "No, we need to keep the Lions on Thanksgiving because it's because it's all we as Detroit Lions fans have." I mean, hey, if that's what gets you out of bed in the morning, yeah, like you, you can't. You can't hate it. You can't want to change that. But yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, man. I, it's rough. Listen, it's rough. I pity the team. I, I really do. Because, you know, not only the Lions struggling this, this year, Jared Goff is looking, you know, th- he's really kind of getting crapped on. Oh, he regressed. Of, well, he, he, he's yeah. regressed. But one of the other things, too, is, with him is he's technically never won a game without Sean McVay. I don't know if you know that, Seth. That's like, that's a legit set. He's never won a game without Sean McVay as his head coach. When he when he first came in the league, he was a backup for uh, the majority of the season. I, I believe played out the final seven games of of the season before McVay was brought in under Jeff Fisher, and he went and he ended up going zero and seven. Then he then he goes and plays with plays with McVay, has some success there. Now gets shipped off to Detroit, is zero ten and one, has never won a that, game without Sean mm. McVay as his head coach. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that, and that just like it just makes it so much worse. I don't even know what to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. That sucks. It really is. It's so bad. It's like, it? oh God. 
that is one monkey you really need to get off your back. <laughs> I just, I really, I, I, I never could imagine. Like that's so much pressure now. I, I, the amount of pressure that I feel like for him now, I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. Yeah, he's never won without him. <laughs> that it's, sucks. It, this isn't even Brady without Belichick or anything like that. Like, yeah. like, like where, where people used to say for a long time, oh, Brady was a system quarterback. Jared Goff is looking like the definition of a system quarterback yeah. where, you know, he just physically can't do it without, without those guys. And listen, Detroit is a hellhole. Like it, like there's, there's no, de- there's no debating it, the city itself and the team. I mean, it, 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 both of it are terrible and they're going to get the number one pick. And I hope that they can somehow build a culture out there. I mean, it's been far too long that they've been this terrible. So you know, here's to that. I hope that they can put some something together, but my God, man, on, on the holiday, they're 37, 43 and two. Yeah. It's not a great record. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I really hope that they can turn the team around and the franchise around because like, dude, I, I love, like, I like Detroit. I don't, yeah. I've never had an issue with the Detroit lions. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. They signed Matt Patricia. Got to be honest with you. That was yeah. like, I don't think that was a smart move at all, but like other than that, I mean, I know I liked Matthew Stafford loved Megatron. Oh, like yeah. dude, which is crazy to watch, but like, I, I hope that they turn it around and they can finally at least get one or two wins this season. I hope they just have a huge upset and like no one sees it coming, but I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't win a game. I really hope they do though. Yeah. I, I, it, because if they go 0 16 and one, that's yeah. Especially because the extra game added in this year, that would just be so painful to watch. That's um, yeah, that's another. That's just another level of. I hope to God that they win. I, they need to do something, man. Especially imagine, imagine they end up like losing 15, and they tie again on like the last mm-hmm. game of the season. That, yeah, that, that would suck. But hey, tie is not a loss. It's not a I loss. Would take it. It's not a lot. I, I just can't be, I can't imagine being like a player on a team that it's got to be the most frustrating thing. Yeah. I just can't imagine it. Like I, all the credit in the world yeah. for, for sticking that through. Like I understand like contracts and everything, but like, look at, you know, Odell Beckham who just threw fits until he got traded out. Mm-hmm. Antonio Brown, yeah. like, like you, you know what do, I mean? You can do certain stuff like that. I mean, I, I know from personal experience, I've played on a couple teams, you know, you know, obviously not like incredibly high level. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like, tr- I'm talking like summer ball, fall ball yeah, yeah. Type, type stuff that, you know, just kind of fun, like little leagues. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you're kind of middle of the road, you're still kind of invested in it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I've been on some teams. I, I went on a team that w- in one fall ball, just, you know, I was actually like, I'm, I'm not a bad ball player, but some of the guys that we had on this team were just atrocious. And the team yeah. that, the team ended up going 0 and 12 in across fall ball and, you know, just going through it. Eventually you, you kind of just realize what's around you and you kind of just start to tune things out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I mean, like, it's one thing if you're on a team with like all your friends and like, oh, you're yeah. just having fun with it, but like, yeah, it, it's still, it's never fun to lose. Yeah. So like I've been on trash teams and like, you know, I've never gone like winless, but like I've last place for sure. Yeah, I'm. But yeah, unfortunately, that's... unfortunately, this winless team I was on, uh, I I only had one kid that I knew on there. Everyone else was just complete randos. One one kid I became decently good friends with afterwards, but uh, that was a terrible uh, that was a terrible time, especially because of uh, one one particular thing I remember about that it, about that team. Kind of just want to touch on that real quick was, uh, so I remember I I was supposed to play for a team called the uh, Hurricanes and you know I was going to play for them for my fall ball league. They end up uh, disbanding and the, the the coach ends up saying, "Hey, we're going to send you over to this league if you want to go play over there, feel free." I was like, "Yeah, sure thing." I show up the first day, they're handed out the they're handing out the t-shirts and mind you, I'm a I'm a junior to senior in high school at this point. So be aware of what be aware of what I'm saying. They hand out like the like the T-ball like cotton t-shirts and the baseball the baseball caps have literally have velcro straps in the back i'm like really? I'm, I, I, I'm i'm like oh no <laughs> i'm like this can't be good and 
all of a sudden I show up and the, the head coach of the team, I, w- I won't say where he's from, but he, he ends up, he ends up approaching my dad of all, of all guys and, and says, Hey, can you, can you technically say you're the coach of this team? And my dad goes, why? And he, he, he ends up saying, well, I'm the athletic director of this school. And if I get caught coaching a team, I could get, I could get fired. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, okay. so, so my dad, my dad goes, all right, I'll assume this position. And just, <laughs> it, it was a, there were so many just bad things that happened with them. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was so bad. Yeah. I, yeah, honestly, like some of the jerseys nowadays, like they're nice. I used to have just like my entire, until I got to high school, like it was always yeah. just a pullover t-shirt. Oh yeah. And like, you know, the weird like trucker caps with like the foam up here and then oh, like yeah. the weird string that goes across it. Yeah. That was like the uniform until I got to high school. And then I was like, all right, this is kind of nice, but like. Hey, you get some button downs. It's actually yeah. kind of sick. <laughs> it's, we, uh, yeah. Yeah. Had- we had the sleep. We had the sleeveless vests. Is what we had for our okay. for our town okay. league. So we we would just wear a white shirt underneath, and we had just a vest. It was a button down vest that you'd wear. It there you kind go. Of, it wasn't the worst thing ever, but it was like the hats were always like terrible. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that was always it. That that's always where you knew whether your team was good or not. It was if the hats were bad. Yeah, that, yeah. That, like we had for my JV team, we had like the mesh just like jersey. Oh and, yeah. And I would come home and I just have like weird, like speckled sunburns everywhere because like the mesh would just go through. And I was like, yeah. I don't need sunblock, but like, <laughs> so like that, that was a rough year, did. but that, honestly, like, I think I still have the Jersey. I think technically I was probably supposed to give it back, but like, we're it was a practice supposed- Jersey. It was fine. We're all supposed to give those back. Yeah, There were plenty. We didn't get back as well. So don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> oh, but, but no, nah, man, there, there are some great stories. I, I know from, you know, travel ball like that. And you know, when, when, when things are, when things are good, you know, you're a unit and everything feels awesome. But man, mm-hmm. when you're on some sucky teams, if, and if you're not with a bunch of your friends to kind of just embrace that, that just yeah. terrible thing, that terribleness, it can really just suck. It's character building, but it sucks. It really, like, yeah, it, it, it's character. Yeah, no, you're right. It is. So, uh, but maybe not, not how you want to build character just yeah. because of it's a rough way to do it, like losing constantly. But like, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, like, it makes you appreciate a lot more. Oh yeah. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you know, you, you mentioned character building and uh, you know, moving into the final section of our, of the show today uh, you know, a, a team that's been building a lot of character uh, over the, over the season so far has been the new England Patriots. Uh, I've, I've been really impressed with what they've been doing this season, obviously has got off to a really, really bad start. I think we were, I think we were like two and four at some point, it yeah. looked like it was going to be a repeat of the 2020 season. So a lot of people were, were just saying, Oh, Oh boy, here we go again. Is bill on, people were saying is bill on the hot seat. What's the deal there. And, I, I was, I was like, okay, like regardless of, regardless of this ends up like 2020 again, I don't think you say bills on the hot seat yet, but man, uh, my God, th- this team has gone through quite the, uh, through quite the uh, resurgence here. They ended up winning six in a row. They're now eight and four in second in the AFC playoff picture. They're behind the Ravens who, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, regardless of the way the AFC playoff picture looks, the Ravens had a terrible, uh, yeah. they, they had themselves a terrible month. M- um, Sunday night football game against the Browns. The fact that they could just barely eke that out says a lot about them, but uh, you know, second, the AFC playoff picture, they did, the Pats did extremely well against the Titans this weekend, you know, albeit that the Titans were basically on one leg. Yeah. Uh, they, they beat them 36 to 13 uh, Mac Jones, 23 of 32 had 310 yards, two touchdown passes uh, all around. Uh, did you watch the game and how did you feel about it? Um, honestly, I didn't, well, I didn't get to watch Sundays because yeah. I had, Again, like I got a puppy, so we had oh, to yeah. do like a behavioral like <laughs> class. So oh. like, I didn't get to watch that game, but um, I watched the highlights. Mm-hmm. Mac Jones, honestly, I knew he was like definitely probably going to be that. That was a stupid sentence. Definitely probably going to be, but like, <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, I, I, I say plenty. I, of, I say way <laughs> stupid stuff all the time, man. You're good. I knew he was going to be. I didn't think he was going to be as good as he is right now. Like his completion rating is like for a rookie yeah. first of all is like nuts but like i mean he's also just a lot better than i thought he was gonna be yeah um but i mean yeah like no the just they're definitely coming together like you can mm. definitely tell like they're, they're starting to build a lot more chemistry it's just like a whole team and like hopefully they go far i didn't think they were going to be as good as they are this year like i made multiple tiktoks basically <laughs> of me just like sitting in a shower you know like that weird like I think it's like a Dido song or whatever. 
I, I think and, I, I think I know what TikTok yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. So I was just like, I made two of those because I was like, damn, the Patriots are gonna absolutely suck this year. Yeah. And then they started getting people free agents. I mean, like Judon. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was, I was like, I was just reading off your your, your TikTok page, so I just had it open on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> but nah, uh, uh. dude, like Judon, that sign, like that signing, hands down, probably one of the best signings in like all of free agency this year. Yeah, like instantly came in, made a huge impact on the team. Can't go wrong with that. Like, I, I hope he's here for a long time because, like, I, I just love watching him, dude. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's crazy. Mm-hmm. I love him as well, especially because you know Hightower is you know he's been amazing for many years, but he's mm-hmm. even getting up there in age now. So yeah, and especially the you know the the shelf life of the shelf life of linebackers can kind of be up and down depending on some guys. And Matthew Judon is just a breath of fresh air into this defense. He has just been a monster for us. And you're right, yeah. every quarterback is fearing those red sleeves. Uh, it's, every, yeah, <laughs> every guy is fearing those red sleeves. Which I, I mean, I got to give it to him. He is. He is, he's real. He's reestablished himself with the Patriots. Uh, you know, a lot of Ravens fans, when he came over here, that they were, they were saying, they were saying, Matt, they were saying, Judon's a good player, but, but he's, but he's basically a system guy. He's overrated. He's not going to yeah. be able to do it here. Comes here and arguably is having the best Just season. of thrives. Career. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm pumped with what's happened there. Uh, basically the Patriots in most of their free agent signings that bill had mm-hmm. where he spent uh, all of the Patriots yeah. finances in one day, uh, the majority, the majority of their hitting the majority, ugh, the, the the vast majority of the majority of them are hitting besides John U. Smith. He, he yeah. hasn't come yeah. together whatsoever. And it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. Maybe they dump him after this year, mm-hmm. but Hunter Henry, who, you know, also wasn't involved at the beginning of the year has come alive and he has just mm-hmm. been a focal point of this offense. And it seems like it's gone from blood. to Coates to Brady to Gronk yep. to Jones to Hunter. And yeah. I love it. And, you know, I, I love the tight end connection that New England has. It's always mm-hmm. fun to see uh, our running game is is has been especially fun to watch this year, especially because, you know, even with James White out, Damian Harris has, is is taking a big stride in this yeah. year. Ramondre Stevenson, where when I saw his tape uh, out of college, I was so excited because he just reminded me of a Garrett Blunt 2.0. Yeah. And then <laughs> and Brandon Bolden of all guys, which mm-hmm. I didn't expect whatsoever. Brandon Bolden is like a, he can he can play offense now. Like I'm so confused and you know, I'm glad for that, but man, it is, it's been incredible. I, I, I'm so happy with this team. You know, you look at the receiving core as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kendrick Bourne, he, he's really coming alive. And let me tell you, man, when Kendrick Bourne is on for the Patriots offense and they're utilizing them, their offense hums. It is top of the line. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I, so like at the beginning of the year, like, sorry, there's like a ton of sirens. Oh, don't worry about it. Um, (laughs) No, like at the beginning of the year, like my expectations for the team, like obviously following last year, were not great. Mm-hmm. But like, dude, I mean, easily the free the free agency this year. Yeah. Like that, I think it just set like a bar. Like I obviously like not all years are gonna be like that, probably oh, yeah. for a while until yeah. you know Belichick is out and there's like, no, we need to spend money. But like, I mean it's ridiculous. Like the amount of players that just came in and instantly made an impact Mm -hmm. is unreal. I mean, usually like I wish Aguilar was more involved. I know like he is involved, but like not as much as I thought he was going to be when we, when we got him. Mm -hmm. Um, Hopefully he starts coming alive more and gets more opportunities. Cause I, I love like Aguilar. He he's, I've watched him since like he came into the league. Yeah. Um, But I mean, other than that, dude, like the running game, just plowing through people. Mm-hmm. You love it. You love it. You love to see it. Um, yeah, I can't imagine. Like, I I know that I don't want to jinx anything, so I'm not gonna say what I you know Super Bowl. But like, listen, I mean, it would it, be a shock if they it, did. It, it'd be a shock as well, especially because no rookie quarterback has ever made it to a Super Bowl, yeah. I believe, or which is crazy. One. Yeah, it, it's a crazy stat. So listen, Mac Jones, he's in an incredible position mm-hmm. right now. Uh, obviously, you know, we didn't get to see the Titans at their best. So if we meet up in the playoffs, it could be another story. Mm-hmm. But man, I, I got to tell you, Belichick, I, I didn't know how he was going to respond to Brady going out and winning, winning a Super Bowl this yeah. the, the season, the season after he leaves your team. 
Brady goes out there, has an amazing season at 43 years old, goes out, wins the Super Bowl. And everyone was like, okay, what's Belichick's next chess move? And he mm-hmm. spent all this money. And it was like, okay, he's making these moves. He's making these moves. Goes out, gets Mac Jones. Oh my God, he's getting Mac Jones. And for the first six games of the season, it was like, it was like, oh boy, we we just fallen flat. Like nothing mm-hmm. is going our way. And it, it was, but now when you look back on it and you see, you see Belichick going out, spending the money and saying, and for Belichick to admit, hey, I, hey, we our, our team, we don't have the talent that, that yeah. we need to. I, we need to go out and spend some money. For him to even, for him to say that is impressive. And then for him to also go out and have an incredibly good draft in getting Jones, Stevenson, mm-hmm. and, Chris, and, uh, and Barmore has been amazing for us because, I mean, this has been probably Belichick's best draft in the past decade, oh, yeah. in my opinion. So, to see him go out and actually make these legitimate moves is something I mean, I'm really excited about. When was the like, like the last time that his like draft class was actually like super strong? I think the last time probably you had a draft like this was when they got Chandler Jones and Dante mm-hmm. Hightower in the same yeah. draft. That was probably and the like, last time. How long ago was that? You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's so for him to yeah, like you said, just be like, no, we you know we're not good enough. We need to yeah. we need to we need to improve. I mean, mm-hmm. for him to do that, it says a lot, and it, and it. It's, it shows that it shows that, hey, we didn't do we didn't make the right decisions over the past couple of years. We need to now make up for it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, for him to say anything aside from like, yeah, moving on to the next. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> With the like the mumble, just it's it's crazy. I'm I don't know how long that's going to last. Yeah, I can't imagine him doing much this offseason unless it's like resigning some people. But like, dude, I could not be happier with like what they're coming together as like this is a good group they are and and it's surprising i'm excited about it too because they're finally starting to gel and i think that's what the problem was you saw in those first games i mean we did losing miami i think if you play that game Mm -hmm. again they crush miami i I know that they're on a surge themselves but i think you play that game over and it's a different story i don't think damian harris is fumbling the football i don't think you're having the problems that you had in that game and i'm really excited to see what this what this team can look like Mm -hmm. To be fair, Miami is like always been one of those teams that like just upset people, though. Yeah, I mean, you, even when the Patriots have their Super Bowl seasons, mm-hmm. you don't want to go down to Miami and play in Miami. Which, oh god, I, I mean, mean, remember the thing with Gronk? <sighs> like, don't remind me. Man. Like that's, that haunts that I haunts was, me. I was at a I was at a Patriots away game at Miami back in 2015. I don't know mm-hmm. if you remember this, but do you remember when they signed Stephen Jackson and mm-hmm. and ran the ball with him like 29 times down yeah. down with the Dolphins and. We lost the number one seed to the Broncos because of that. Mm-hmm. I was at that game. Were you really? Yeah, it was painful to watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching this offense go, and I'm, I'm, I'm just like, man, we're running this thing with Steven Jackson a lot. <laughs> and yeah. then, I mean, I remember seeing, uh, I remember seeing Cameron Wake come over the middle and just blow mm-hmm. Brady, just blow Brady up. And it was, oh, man, that was an ugly game to be at. Yeah. I mean, listen, it was the only time I got to see Brady play live, so mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm grateful for everything. But dude, you beat me. I've never seen it. So yeah. It, I'm yeah. I'm grateful I was able to see it with the Pats, but mm-hmm. bro, <laughs> that, was, that was rough. Uh, but no, that was that was pretty rough. But uh, you know, obviously we have the Bills coming up next week. That's mm-hmm. gonna really decide who is the king of the AFC East. Obviously, they're falling off. Yeah, they're 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 kind of hitting a rough patch it's, right now. Yeah. So uh, you know, maybe we we're catching them at the right time. We're gonna be playing them on Monday night football. That's gonna be a great matchup mm-hmm. for us. I'm hoping, you know, we're going out to Orchard Park though, so we're gonna have to really show up i'm excited about this game i mean i think that the bills are currently favored by three points but i don't know how, how are you feeling man oh i mean honestly like what mac jones really hasn't played in the cold yet yeah i mean he, i'm a little I mean, it, it was cold on sunday it was cold. yeah um buffalo is like another story <laughs> yeah so I, i'm i'm a little is, i mean New England has kind of gotten lucky these past couple of weeks. This is going to be the real test of, of where you see, okay, where is, what is this team made of when they feel, when they face real adversity and a real guy like, mm-hmm. like Stefan Diggs coming at you, yeah. how are you going to, how are you going to be able to deal with that? Yeah. And that's what Edelman said too. Like he wants to see him face adversity and see how he handles the pressure because like, you know, to this point, like obviously he hasn't had it easy, mm-hmm. but like there's a lot better teams than we've played. Yeah. And, you know, aside, like throw the elements in there too. Yeah. Like, I mean, he played what Bama, like it's hot down there. I'm oh, sure yeah. I've never been there, but like from what it looks like, you can play in everyone, shorts. Yeah. You can play in shorts. In exactly. Distance, so you're fine. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little hesitant to see. Cause from what, like, at least from what I've been hearing on the radio too, like his hands aren't the largest. So he can't like, you know, when you're cold. Yeah. Obviously you're not going to have as good a grip and slippery and your fingers are numb. So 
I'm a little anxious to see how he handles that, but like, I can't imagine it's going to be night and day. Mm-hmm. I feel pretty good about it, especially with how the b- bills are just declining steadily at the moment, which is nice. Cause... You know, I, I, I'm definitely enjoying it. I mean, I, I, I did not suspect that we were going to see the Pats even mm-hmm. close to first place in the AFC oh God, no. East this year, let, let alone the AFC. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm grateful for everything right now. Obviously it's still a long season. We could go out and lose our, we could go out and lose our last five straight up. And then mm-hmm. we just go, we have a losing record. So listen, yeah. nothing is granted to us right mm-hmm. now. And, you know, but I think it is, I think it is important. Uh, like you said, I think we do need to take this game. You know, this needs to be the game where we, where we really go out there and make a difference. Cause yeah. if we can win this game against Buffalo, go into the bye week on a high and then mm-hmm. come out, come out strong uh, out of it. I think that would, I think that's really going to determine how our season goes from here on out. Yeah. And like, granted, like he's held his own in like most of the games, Yeah, like the game against the box, like he held it, he held his own. Mm. So like that alone tells me like, okay, at least he knows what he's doing because you know, granted you're going toe to toe with Brady. Like, I mean, yeah. Cause listen, he's been putting some, you know, high emotion situations mm-hmm. in general. I mean, you know, you're facing your replacement who is the greatest quarterback of all time. Yeah. He's coming back into a stadium. That's going to be chanting his name, you know, regardless of how they feel about him. So listen, I mean, it, it, it's, he, you know, while at certain times, the, at certain times, the competition always hasn't been mm-hmm. at the highest emotionally he's been tested. Oh, yeah. he's been tested from the very start yeah which granted like how old is he i think he i think he might be 23 24 yeah so like hopefully he only gets better from here but like to be that young and like deal with that amount of pressure in anything really in like any sport really just anything in life but like it, it's crazy how he's handled it so far and yeah he seems like he's very just like to the book all business like you see him smile and stuff but like you can tell him and belichick they're made for each other you can you can see it like i i love the i the love the relations they're having yeah uh i love that i love the relationship that they have with each other and i also love what josh mcdaniels has been able to mm-hmm. do with him yeah uh, i i think that the patriots really need to hold on to josh mcdaniels because listen I think that Belichick has been a major part of his success, but mm-hmm. what McDaniels has been able to do for Mac Jones is instrumental. And I think that, you know, you got to hold on to him, I think, for at least another two years. Let, yeah. let let Jones be able to develop with a really good offensive coordinator. And then if, you know, McDaniels leaves or Belichick retires, you have a system in place and you have a quarterback yeah. that is ready to go. Yeah, yeah. No, and I think he'll be ready for that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Belichick's what, 70 now? Yeah, he's around 70, yeah. Yeah, so like, Obviously, I know he said like he doesn't want to coach until he's like you know being like like eighty and coaching still. But like, if you got a stud in Mac Jones right now, I, I write it out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, the thing with Belichick too is just like he's really just like taken on more tasks throughout the year. Yeah. So that that's a thing too. I I think it, if if he does get if he does get something going with Mac Jones, he's gonna have to you know learn how to split things up again, mm-hmm. which is gonna be the which could be tough for him because I mean listen the, the guy likes power and the guy likes being able oh, yeah. to be able to control the operation. But mm-hmm. I think for his sake, especially in his older age, you're gonna want you're gonna want to get more guys around you where you can split things up. And whether that's giving Gerard Mayo more power on the defensive side, whether that's giving your son more power on that side, it's really gonna depend. And it's it's an interesting time to be a Pats fan. I I am yeah. so. I mean, for someone who thought that, you know, Cam Newton in the dark days and just it was never going to, you know, get back to, you know, anything close to competitive for at least five, 10 years. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy to see this, to see this yeah. Uh, so far. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm also happy to see Cam Newton yeah. do as good as he did the last I mean, two games. Like the Sunday, last game wasn't great, but like yeah, so, the first so, game, the first game. Listen, the first two games, I, listen, I'm glad for Cam Newton. I'm glad that he's in Carolina and he's happy there. Yeah. Uh, Last game against Miami, I kind of have a little uh, animus towards him, especially because I ended up starting him in fantasy. I saw that he was facing the <laughs> Dolphins, who were number 28 ranked against quarterbacks in terms of defense. Man goes up, man proceeds to put up six points. Yeah. Uh, so, listen, Cam, uh, happy for you, man, but come on. <laughs> like, he put up, like, 26 in his la- in the game prior. So, I, I, was like, yeah. I was like, oh, shoot, Cam Newton's on a hot streak. And no, He's a lock, yeah. but then, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> yeah no. Miami, so, you never you never underestimate my. Like underestimate Miami, dude. I'm Freaking telling you, Dolphins, man. I, I can't do it, but uh, I, I, I hope that he has success. I hope that the Patriots have mm-hmm. success going forward. But Elijah, I think it is time to now say that we are now down to the wire, which means that we're going to do a little wrap through of what we talked about in this episode, and we will send you guys on your way. 
obviously welcome to we ended up welcoming elijah bovin back into the show uh first show back uh on with dtw uh his first back, back since june uh our first show back in a week as we took a break for thanksgiving and elijah it was obviously a great time having you on the show today thank you so much for coming back and thank you so much for uh, as well for being be, being patient and dealing with all these reschedules i know oh, it's kind of bit crazy life happens life yeah. happens and i appreciate the opportunity to come on and i always love talking sports and yeah. especially you know just everything going on with sports right now too is just an exciting time so yeah um, i appreciate the opportunity absolutely man i i appreciate you coming back and i'd love to have you back again on on, on, on again for another episode at, at some point uh but i know uh, you know, on today's episode, we ended up talking about the free agent frenzy going on in the MLB right now. Talked about all the crazy moves going on there from Marcus Simeon and, and Corey Seager to the Texas Rangers to uh, Max Scherzer going to the New York Mets. It has been an absolute crazy 48 hours in MLB baseball, obviously leading up to the eventual uh, work stoppage that everyone thinks is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And now about seven hours, we said we said eight at the beginning of the show, but uh, at the time this is being recorded as of as of midnight on December 1st, this, this thing could all shut down. So listen, yeah. it's going to be a very wild ride across major league baseball. And in doing so, we talked about the state of the Red Sox, as well as David Ortiz's uh, stake in the hall of fame and whether he'll get in first ballot, what that means for him. And, you know, in NFL news, additionally, we ended up talking about whether the NFL should end the tradition of the lions playing on Thanksgiving day. Uh, listen, man, it's been enough time. I think they got to do it. Uh, they got to pull the plug. Listen, I, I didn't even realize this. I had to do some research. I, I looked into it. They ended up, they, they took the tradition away from the Cowboys for two years. They, Did they really, yeah. I, in 1975, they, when the St. Louis Cardinals at the time were trying to build a following from themselves, the NFL took the tradition away from the Cowboys, gave it to the Cardinals to try to build them up popularity and just didn't work. So they just gave it back to Detroit or back to uh, Dallas rather. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, All right. like, <laughs> I'm like, listen, it's not the most sacred thing. You can kind of mess around with it a little bit. I mean, you know, I, I'll end with this though. If if they can't they can't take it away from Detroit, just add a fourth game. I, I mean, I, I'd like them to add a fourth game regardless. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be fine with that. Just add another game. More football. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm out here thinking. I, I I'd love it. So that that's another thing that you could do as well. Uh, but then in uh, but then finally in NFL news, we talked about the state of the New England Patriots. And their victory over the Tennessee Titans on Sunday, beating them 36 to 13. Uh, talked about Mac Jones and how he's going to be able to do going on down the stretch. It's an exciting time in sports, and I'm so excited to talk about it with you guys. But if you guys are not falling down to the wire at this point, what are you guys doing? We're available everywhere you guys can find podcasts. We're available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube. But the main hub that you guys can reach us through is our Instagram. You can follow that at down dot to the wire on Instagram. Again, at down dot to the wire on Instagram for any updates regarding shows and, you know, breaking news that that comes out at certain points. Uh, Elijah, I'll pass it off to you for anything, for any social medias that you want to plug. Uh, my TikTok, Elijah underscore Bovin, B-O-I-V-I-N. I know it's a hard last name to spell because, well, there's just like a silent eye thrown in there. So that um, Instagram, Elijah Bovin music, that's pretty much the only social media I'm ever active on. Got to be honest with you. So absolutely, I mean, and listen, two. and listen, I'll be plugging both on both in in the description of this video. I and appreciate we, it. And we thank you so much for coming out for another episode, man. But from down to the wire, I'm Brian Costa. I'm Elijah Bovin, and we will see you guys next time. Have a great, have a great day. Take care.